Oh, hello. Gregor Mendel was born on July 22, 1822 in Hesendorf, Austria. As a child and all through his high school years, he enjoyed gardening. When college came around, he enrolled in the Olmutz Philosophical Institute, but instead went to St. Thomas Monastery of Augustinian. He later became a priest in 1847. Mendel realized that his passion was teaching. He was assigned to teaching at a secondary school. From there, he began experimenting with plants, and eventually through his experiments, developed his two laws. I have to go now. The show's about to start. We have Gregor Mendel with us here today, and he's going to answer a few questions that the public has been dying to know. How are you, Gregor? I'm fine, Julian. How are you? Fine, thank you. Now, if you do not mind, I would like to get started. Of course. Now, one of the most important questions that viewers have kept asking you have been, how did you get into the field of genetics? I was first interested in the field of genetics when I heard of the biologist Frank Ugner, who had a practical view on the inheritance of genes. Where did you obtain the research skills you use? Because it obviously took quite a lot of tests and examples to prove your theory of heredity to other people. Well, I developed and practiced my research when I was at the University of Vienna. How exactly did you notice and record the plant's change in characteristics? Well, I self-pollinated each individual so that they would be true breeds, true breed plants, and covered every plant to prevent bugs from pollinating the other plants accidentally. I then analyzed seven pairs of seeds, looking for comparisons like a tall plant, a short plant, a small stem plant, or a large stem plant. I saw when you cross the tall parent plant and a short parent plant that it's called a monohybrid cross. When you get tall parent that is tall, not a medium plant like I expected. This is what made me discover the concept of hereditary units, now called genes, and the different versions of genes, called alleles. Is there a special name that you gave the pattern of inherited traits that you discovered with the dominant and recessive genes? Yes, there is. I have two laws to describe my research. There are the laws of surrogation and the laws of, and the law of independent assortment. What did you use to predict the gene that the plant would have? I used the Punnett square. It's a diagram that predicts the expected outcomes of genetic crosses by considering all possible combinations of gametes. If there are two of the same alleles of a particular gene, say height for example, what would that be called? That would be called a homozygous. What would it be called if they were two different alleles? That would be called a heterozygous. Yes, that it <coughs> is very easy to remember. <coughs> Can I have some water, please? Would you like some water coming? Yes. Igor? Yes, master. <laughs> get, some get some water for this fine gentleman. Yes, master. <laughs> <laughs> We are going to start reading off questions that we have gotten in by email. The first one reads, what is a genotype and a phenotype? A genotype is a set of alleles that an individual has. A phenotype is the physical appearance of a trait. I think we have time for one more question. This one reads, I'm not sure what a test cross is. Could you explain what it is? A test cross is a, a, test cross is a cross in which an individual whose phenotype is dominant and his genotype is not known. This is a cross with a homozygous recessive individual. I'm afraid that is all the time we have today, Gregor. But thank you again for your time. You can read more about Mr. Mendel and his amazing discovery involving genetics in his paper, Experiments with Plant Hybrids. <laughs>